Hey! Welcome back to the channel, The Young Black Professional. I'm Olivia, and today we're going to be talking about burnout. Today, I really just wanted to be as transparent and authentic as possible and explain to you my experience with burnout and how it has negatively and positively impacted my life as of late. <laughs> So I have some notes here on my iPad. Normally there is a case on it, so please don't freak out because it's going naked today. So first and foremost, what is burnout? According to Mayo Clinic, job burnout is a state of physical or emotional exhaustion that also involves a sense of reduced accomplishment and loss of personal identity. So it's not technically a medical diagnosis, but the symptoms and the effects of burnout are definitely real. If you do not particularly care for the YouTube format of my abridged <laughs> burnout story, you can definitely tune into my podcast, which is called Black Woman Rising. I'll leave a link in the description below. And if listening audio or audio visual, which we're doing right now, isn't really your thing. I also have this story written on my blog, which I'll also leave down below in the description. So here are some of the symptoms of burnout. They are exhaustion, isolation, escape fantasies, and frequent illnesses and irritability. So in no particular order, they can hit you at any point in time. But if you're like me with exhaustion, I was and I actually still am, which could be due to being sick, always tired. 24 seven, I feel a little at least, at least a little bit drowsy. And that is a major downer on my day and it also just affects my ability to focus. I've always kind of been a grandma in the sense that I go to bed pretty early compared to most of my contemporaries. It's usually 9 30, 10 o'clock. I might take a pre-nap on the couch before I go to my bed but it's just could also be because I wake up at 4 or 5 a.m. most days, but we're going to gloss over that. I'm super tired throughout the day, and that has always been a negative on my day. <laughs> Isolation, which intensified this year. I didn't really talk to my friends unless they reached out to me first. I wasn't speaking much to my coworkers either, who I tend to speak to a lot actually throughout the workday and for a while I wasn't even speaking to my boyfriend as much as I normally do or when I was it wasn't fulfilling conversation it was kind of the quick one-liners or one word responses and I know that that drove him crazy but I just didn't know how to connect with anyone on the same level that I had been connecting with people and it was it was frustrating and it was just easier at times for me to be completely alone and by myself especially since I couldn't go anywhere that's my dog <laughs> okay then escape fantasies pretty quick pretty simple I just always imagined what if I hit the lotto tomorrow can I hit the lotto tomorrow? I will be so out of this piece, it's not even funny. I will be gone, nobody will hear from me, nobody will know where I am, maybe two or three people, including my close family, but excluding, sorry, excluding my close family, but that was a daily thought. I would often get agitated again going back to the isolation it was frustrating not being able to relate to people so I would just turn into myself and the only person who was not making me irritable 
every second at one point in time was myself. And even then, I would sometimes get upset with myself for not just feeling the way I normally did and not being my normal self. So even that was upsetting and frustrating to me. And we already kind of went over this, but I was sick every single year for the past four or five years now. And in the case of 2020, sick twice in the year. And it's just been a really crazy and not fun ride to be on these past few years with regard to physical health. If you're wondering what the stages of burnout are, they can happen to you, but not all at once. And just recognizing them and knowing that it's possible that you could be burnt out, I'm hoping will help you in knowing whether or not you're burnt out and if it's time for you to take a step back from whatever it is that you're doing, whether it be work, school. I'm not telling you to drop out or quit either of these things, but just taking some time, some more time for yourself. So here are the 12 stages as defined by Herbert Freudenberger and his colleague Gail North. Excessive drive or ambition, pushing yourself to work harder, neglecting personal care and needs, displacement of conflict, no time for non-work-related needs, denial, withdrawal, behavioral changes, depersonalization, inner emptiness, depression, and mental or physical exhaustion or collapse. So I have experienced each of those <laughs> over these past few years, and I think 2020 was the culmination of all of them and everything just coming to a head. So how did I experience burnout? I'm going to put my iPad down for a minute. And I first started feeling burnt out in grad school. So I didn't recognize it as burnout, but I definitely felt like I was overdoing it at times and I would just be completely exhausted and really tired but there was no sense of urgency for me to rest. And I think I just had so much on my plate that I was able to just keep going and plowing through work and school and internships, graduate assistantships, extracurricular activities that I didn't feel that there was time to be burnt out. So I didn't, I didn't feel it yet. After I finished my MBA, I went on to work at a public accounting firm. And I mean, it was great. The teams were great. I loved the people. That's really why I stayed in accounting and at that firm. But I kept having this sense of, I don't know if this is what I want to do with my life. And it was kind of the work. It was kind of just feeling isolated at times because I was only one of two black people, black women in particular, in that office, in that space. But it kind of hit me that maybe I don't know who I am. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. And I had a mini, what is it, quarter life crisis. <laughs> So what do you do when you're having a quarter life crisis? I mean, don't, don't handle it the way I did, but I kind of freaked out. <laughs> and I freaked out big time in the form of just coming home and being completely drained, sometimes even crying, and I'm not a crier, and just feeling like I was trapped. I literally felt like I had nowhere to go. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I was in a great paying job at a great company with great people. I made some now lifelong friends there, but I was just confused. I was confused, I was concerned, and I was drained. 
So in 2018, this video is in 2021, if you didn't check that out yet, but I started feeling like I couldn't do it anymore. And I thought that maybe it was just the job. So I started looking for other jobs and I decided I was going to apply. I was going to put everything that I had into applications because it wasn't my busy season anymore. And I applied to about five companies. I got callbacks for all of them. And then as I was interviewing, I was feeling pretty confident. I thought, you know, this was the good move for me. So in 2018, everything had come to a head. I finally got sick and tired of being sick and tired because prior to that, I was sick every single year <laughs> starting in, I want to say 2016. I started getting more colds and things. Then 2017, I had pink eye. And what was crazy about me having pink eye was it was viral pink eye and not bacterial pink eye. So bacterial pink eye is I'm touching something dirty. I'm rubbing my hands across my dog's bed where he has done who knows what, touching my face and bacteria will get into your eye. No, no, no. <laughs> this was a viral infection that had manifested in the form of pink eye, which my optician or ophthalmologist, somebody correct me for whatever this person's title is. <laughs> so I believe it's ophthalmologist. My ophthalmologist is the one who told me that it was actually viral pink eye and that there's no way to prevent it other than just keeping your immune system up and healthy and running well. So that was the first time I was majorly sick and miserable. Then in 2018, let me refer to my notes. In 2018, I just completely felt like pure death because I had a cough that lasted for two months following what I thought was the common cold. At this point, I mean, who knows right now? Then in 2019, I got so sick right before Thanksgiving after starting a new job, after being at a new job for a while, actually. I worked late before Thanksgiving and I came home and I just felt like, shh. So I went through Thanksgiving feeling like crap. And by that Friday, Black Friday, I started feeling even worse, and I thought my throat was closing up. So I went to urgent care. They had to give me a steroid, prednisone, in order to prevent my throat from closing up due to inflammation, and just told me to wait it out because I had another viral infection. Then in 2020, last year, I contracted a virus. Who really knows? It's called pityriasis rosea, and that is where bumps will appear all over your body, and it can be due to the changing of the seasons. It tends to happen in early young adults, let's say early 20s and older adults, over, I believe it was 50 or 60, and there's no understanding of what really causes it and there is no way to cure it right away. So I had bumps everywhere for about two full months and then started seeing everything clear up. But even then it was just, everything was itchy. It was kind of like having bug bites everywhere. I would say poison ivy, but I've never been infected or had poison ivy. I've never, been poisoned by poison ivy, so I don't know what that feels like. I imagine it's comparable. But that was early 2020, 
And then late 2020, so December, I contracted coronavirus and it is now January. I am still struggling. <gasps> what you don't see in any of these videos, you don't hear in my podcast. And if I don't tell you, some people may not even know is that I still struggle to even breathe and catch my breath. I have to often stop filming and take a few minutes to gather my thoughts and my breath. And I was put on an inhaler. It's just been, <laughs> it's been rough. And the mental effect of not being able to breathe might be even harder to deal with than actually not breathing or not breathing well. So all of this to say that my overworking and my being drained all the time, both emotionally and physically, has led to a number of downturns in my immune health and my ability, my immune system's ability to fight off disease. And that's evident in the number of viral infections that I've had throughout the years now that could have been minus coronavirus maybe, but that could have been prevented if I had been taking better care of myself. And in prior years, I had been juicing, I had been eating well, I even went on, I think, a year of meal prep or just being very conscious of what I ate in hopes that that would help my immune system and just my overall health and well-being to no avail. I still ended up getting sick each year and really, really struggling with being sick. And this actually coronavirus being the worst of it. But I didn't think to even seek help or acknowledge that I was having a problem or that I had a problem until November of last year when I decided it's time to get therapy. What led to me choosing to get therapy was I was still feeling the same way that I felt back in 2018. So in May of 2018, I got an amazing job offer. I ended up moving to a different company and actually moving locations from a New York suburb to New York City, so the metro area. And I was fine when I first started this new job. I actually loved it. I loved everything about it. I loved the people. I loved the work. I loved the opportunities it gave me, and I just loved being in the city. But <laughs> what I didn't realize until this year is that I wasn't necessarily in love with the work and everything. I was in love with the newness of everything. So all my life I've been working pretty hard. I don't consider myself a super hard worker. Other people have said that I am. I don't necessarily feel that way about myself. But I am pretty much working all the time. <laughs> if I'm not working, I'm spending the free time that I do have with either my boyfriend, my friends, or my mom, who is like one of my best friends. And it felt like those three things, those three groups of people were all of me outside of work. And it felt weird because I didn't know what I liked anymore. I knew I liked going to my boyfriend's basketball games because he's in a rec league. I knew I liked going out for drinks with my friends. I don't know who doesn't like that if you are a drinker. <laughs> I liked being with my mom and her dog and just having family time 
and being with my grandmother and my aunt, just being around family and close friends and my boyfriend. But it got to a point where my whole identity felt like it was my job. If people ask me to tell them about myself, my first thing would always be, I'm an accountant. I'm a tax accountant. I work here. I work there. And it was never me at the core of who I am. And I think in hindsight, that's because I didn't know who I was at my core. And I wasn't comfortable standing in who I was at my core because I had spent so much time and so much energy trying to focus on being somebody who other people could be proud of or being somebody who I thought other people wanted me to be and not focusing on the person that I wanted to be. And that's tough to say, even in front of a camera where I know nobody is currently watching me. But it was a scary and confusing time. And I think all of the lockdowns and shutdowns and just craziness of COVID-19 slash coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, only amplified those negative feelings and those feelings of confusion and being lost and not having a clear path or direction. And not having a clear path or direction was particularly hard for me because I've always planned. <laughs> so my life has always been planned out. I have had a plan for my life. I knew what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go. I knew I wanted to be an accountant in high school, but not because I was super passionate about accounting, but because I knew it was stable. And I knew in some circles, the title of accountant comes with prestige. Now, if you're an accountant, you may be thinking, what the heck is she thinking? Because that is so stupid. <laughs> Not only is it stupid, but if you have ever worked at an accounting firm or just worked as an accountant and had to work your way up, you will realize how stupid that sounds. <laughs> You'll realize how ridiculous you sound clout chasing as an accountant. And I'm sure, actually, I don't know. Maybe lawyers can say the same thing. Maybe doctors can say the same thing. But it was just very juvenile and immature of me to think that I need to go after, only go after what's stable. When I have financial stability, I'm not in any type of student loan debt. I don't have credit card debt. I don't have any disadvantages going into any field or feeling like I'm trapped by any type of debt if I chose to go another route. And I think that's what really makes me struggle today because thinking in hindsight of how ridiculous I was and how ridiculous my thought process was back then. I'm kind of kicking myself. But as my mom always says, everything happens for a reason. So that was my mini tangent. So I'm going to put that to the side. In 2020, the way my burnout manifested was anxiety. So most people don't know this, but I kind of took uh, 180 of my outlook on life, my positivity, my optimism. And I want to say around April or May, I just didn't feel like myself, whoever myself was. <laughs> I was just completely done with work, done with feeling disillusioned by life. I didn't want to do most of the things that 
I had enjoyed doing or I thought I enjoyed doing because I didn't know if I enjoyed doing it because I just felt miserable. I felt, I felt like a prisoner in my own life where I have all the choices in the world. And every Sunday, like clockwork, before work, before the following Monday, I would just break down and cry. And I would cry because I had to go to work and not because I didn't like work. Let me rephrase. Not because I didn't like my team or I was in a toxic environment. It was quite the opposite. It's a great environment, great people. The work is even, it's not difficult per se, but I just, I didn't like it. I just wasn't feeling it, and I felt like it's just not for me. And every Sunday, crying because I felt like I wasn't working toward anything because I didn't know what to work toward because I didn't want to be my manager in a few years, and I didn't want to be my manager's manager further down the line. And I knew that, and I didn't know what the plan was to fix it. So that just made me anxious. And then the thought of just completely changing careers, even though I've seen people do it, logically it made sense to do, but it was just scary as... (laughs) It was... It was terrifying to me, and I didn't know how to mentally or emotionally handle or prepare for that. I didn't know how to make a new plan and pivot and be flexible and adapt. And plus, I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't do some of the things that I normally do. I am an MMA practitioner. I absolutely loved just going to the gym and working out. Couldn't do that shit. So it got to a point where I just felt like, who the F am I? (laughs) And what is my purpose? So in November, I actually October, I think it was the last week of October, I was talking to one of my really great friends, hi Agnes, and we were talking about a number of things, but mainly I explained to her, I think I need therapy. And it was scary to admit that to anyone, but she was very supportive and she told me about better help. So I ended up making an appointment And I have been with my same therapist ever since, because I love her. And it's been really great working through all of the layers of my anxiety and understanding that I know how to think rationally and logically, but I don't feel the same way. So it's been really tough in the throes of it. So November and December, I was still anxious and still just really confused and not knowing who I was. So in November and December, when I was still in the throes of all of this, I was just really confused still, didn't know who I was or what I wanted to do. And then in December, I got coronavirus. So then I kind of felt like that was God's way of forcing me to sit down and have some time to rest and really reflect on not only what my purpose is, but what he's placed in my heart and what I should do with Maybe not the rest of my life, but this 
moment in time of my life. So I've had this blog, The Young Black Professional, for four years at this point. I opened it in 2016, actually right around the 2016 elections. What a show that was. But <laughs> I've had this blog for four years, and I finally said last year, after only posting a couple of things here and there over the past four years, that I really wanted to explore. So I decided I really wanted to explore building a community, building a brand, and just sharing things that I learned along the way and hopefully learning from other young black professionals about their experience in the working world and what it's like to be a black employee in 2020, 2021, and beyond as pretty much a young black millennial. So that's what this is. <laughs> this is pretty much my professional life with some personal intertwined in there, manifesting into what I hope to be a community of people who can share similar experiences or completely different experiences, and we can all just kind of learn from each other. So I wish there was an end to me being burnt out, but to be honest, I'm still working on it. I'm still a work in progress right now. I'm not even at work, and that's a struggle in itself because I am out. <laughs> I am having so many struggles breathing and just staying awake during the day that I just can't even focus anymore on top of the anxiety and on top of the just feeling lost and having an identity crisis. And I'm really just... And I'm really just using this time to reflect and find myself and rest and get better and hopefully share more experiences with you because I don't know what to do <laughs> with all of this time not working when I am up all night as an insomniac because I can't sleep right now. <laughs> and I write when I'm just completely out of breath and have to catch my breath because that is cathartic for me and that is the way that I can relax and I can still express myself in some way because it is very frustrating not being able to breathe and have a regular conversation without getting winded. So what are some ways you can not end up burnt out like me? or you can start to take better care of yourself. For one, and this is one thing I wish I did a little bit earlier, and that's establish boundaries. When you're not at work, don't work. If you don't have to work, if you are not mandated to work, don't work. And that's not to tell you to be a mediocre employee or to tell you to dim your light, if you are an outstanding employee, that's to tell you to take care of yourself. And why do you need to take care of yourself? So you don't end up sick <laughs> every single year like I did, because it could have been prevented. You need to take care of your most important asset, and that's you. So set boundaries. When you're not at work, don't answer your emails. Don't answer the work phone if you don't have to, of course. If you do, if that's part of your job, please do it. But don't feel like you have to go above and beyond. And I know that as black women, particularly, we do feel this need to be two or three times better than our non-black counterparts to get the same. But... It's just not worth it for you mentally and emotionally to stretch yourself thin in this invisible race or invisible competition because at the end of the day, you will be great. So that's one. 
set boundaries, and stick to them. Two is to take care of your mental and emotional health. I am very big on journaling. In addition to journaling, I like meditating. I use the Headspace app. None of this is sponsored. I have tried the 10% Happier app. I think that's what it's called. It didn't really work for me, but it might work for you if Headspace isn't your thing. I spend every morning in prayer before I even get out of bed, and that's more of a spiritual thing, but I feel like it affects me mentally and emotionally. And the last thing that I do is I just breathe. <laughs> so ironic because that's difficult now, but I just find that taking a step back and just breathing for a few minutes really helps reset my emotional state. And the combination of those things is what really helps me level set and feel more like myself and grounds me so that I understand that I'm getting anxious <laughs> when I'm getting anxious and when it's time to just be present. And then take care of your physical health. Please exercise. Please eat well. I'm still guilty of not eating well right now in quarantine. I probably gained the quarantine 15. I'm scared to get on the scale again this week. <laughs> but take care of yourself. Eat well. Drink tons of water. Just be as healthy as you can and intentional about your health and nutrition as you can. That way, you're really taking care of yourself and fortifying your body, especially if you are starting to get exhausted and feel burnt out. <laughs> Even just spending time with loved ones or loved pets. Come here, Riley. This is Riley. Okay, buddy. That was Riley. He's going to go back down on the ground now. But... Spending time with loved ones, it can be friends, family, significant others, that helps too. It just gives you a sense of community and less isolation because when I said I was feeling trapped and just didn't feel like myself, I started to isolate myself from my friends and my family and just kind of hid within myself. And that's not good either. I found that therapy has been the piece that has been paramount to me feeling better and less anxious and just doing better. Because sometimes, you know what, you just need to talk to somebody. And somebody who doesn't know anybody in your group, who doesn't know anybody in your life, who can just give you unbiased, unbiased thoughts, opinions, and ways for you to cope. Because in this day and age, everyone right now is coping with something. And if it's not the big viral monster out there, it's something as simple as even just feeling unsafe or un at home at home. <laughs> So take care of yourself. <laughs> Don't feel isolated like I did. And I hope that this story and this information is helpful to you. If it is, you can like the video or let me know in the comments. And if it's not, I mean, the other button works too, as my buddy on Snazzy Labs says. So any feedback is helpful feedback and I appreciate you watching I appreciate you listening and I hope that you have an amazing 2021 I hope January has been amazing to you and I hope that you stick around and subscribe and enjoy the content here on the blog the podcast on Instagram if you're on Instagram whatever it is whether you support or not I hope that you go forth in peace and have a successful 
rest of your day, evening, morning, here.